guys, it's Erin, and I'm here with a coloring video. I was asked to do a tutorial on how to color with colored pencils, and so I'm going to do my best since Copics are usually my medium of choice. But I really do love my pencils. I have a 120 set of the Caranda Ash Pablo pencils, as well as the 120 set of the Faber-Castell Polychromos. Both of them are oil-based, but I find that they do have a different feel. The Caranda Ash Pablos are a bit softer, and they give they, they feel kind of creamy, which if you don't use them, it's kind of hard to understand what I'm talking about. But um, the second that you use them, the, you, you kind of notice it. And the Polychromos are a bit firm. And the good thing about both of these, especially the Polychromos, is that their leads don't break. I mean, I've dropped my entire set. Well, my husband dropped the entire set once. And it, uh, it they don't break. There's no, you know, splintering, fracturing. The wood is completely solid. Um, they're just really, really high quality pencils. And they're the best pencils I have ever worked with. I've tried other ones. I've tried the, the Prismacolors. I've tried, you know, all the major brands. And just, I, I could not enjoy them as much as I do these these two brands of pencils and if you can only pick one I would pick the polychromos because while they both have but while they're both excellent quality I think the polychromos have a very good range of colors especially in the 120 and their um, the firmness is really great neither one of them produces powder so you don't see me having to really wipe things off much uh, occasionally I will try and blend a bit with my finger, but neither of these even requires you to use uh, baby oil. I've seen people do that, or Gamsol, or, you know, all these different other things. And, you know, I'm not saying that you can't do it and that there's anything wrong with it. I don't prefer to do it. I don't really like the look, and I find that these pencils really don't need it because they just look fabulous on their own. And if you're looking for something like that with, you know, either a sketchy look or you can get a painter like look they're both oil based so you know you can end up having it look like oil paints um, then you can get it from both of these different pencils uh, okay talking about what I'm actually doing the first two colors that I used were dark flesh and cinnamon and both of those were polychromos and now I'm bringing in a lighter color I think I think it's light flesh, which is, no, I don't know. See, the problem is basically what I do is I color dark to light. So you saw the little swatches on the side, and I'm going to list all of the colors that I've used in the uh, description for this video. But what I do is I still color the same way that I do with my Copics, but it's a lot easier to do with pencils. I color dark to light. And what I do is I color a little bit lighter. Yeah, okay, this one is the light flesh. Um, the other one was granite rose, which was a which was a Pablo. And this one is back to the Faber Castell polychromos. You can tell because this is a this is a circular pencil, and the the Caranda Ash ones. They have a uh, they have a hexagonal barrel. Anyway, as you see me doing this, you see me coloring in the dark right here, and I'm being pretty heavy-handed because I want her hair to be dark. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to blend the colors instead of making individual hairs because that's just what I feel like doing for this image. But you see where I want it to be dark along her hairline, where I'm covering right, coloring right now. I'm making it very dark and then I'm using a heavy hand and as I go out to where I want to start blending in the other colors I'm lightening my my hand so I'm not coloring as dark or as heavy with this pencil and you could see even the gradation that I'm getting with just this one pencil so I'm pushing out this dark color into where I want the lighter colors to be and watch me do it again I do the very dark where I want the shadows to be very dark again. I'm going to continue on defining where I want my shadows and I'm really 
I'm not an expert on where to put your shadows and, and making things look 3D and realistic. I do what looks good to my eye, and I do quick and dirty coloring is what I call it. It it looks good on paper, but it's really not a lot of thought involved because I color for stress relief. I don't color for I need this to look exactly the way it would look in real life. I mean, some, for some people that comes naturally, but not for me. So you see me going in with a very light hand here. I know that I want this color to continue through here. I know that I want this part to be darker and then this part to be a little bit lighter because I'm going to come in with my other colors. So I'm, gonna f I'm not going to fill up the whole area, but I'm going to fill up a good amount. And what I'm using right now is the Pablo Dark Carmine. <clears throat> and I'm just making sure to get all of the dark. I color this way with markers, too. I make all of the dark of the one color, and then if I have to go back, I go back. But uh, that was just me sharpening my pencil. I have a electric sh pencil sharpener. It's called the Exacto School Pro. It was recommended by other colored pencil artists. And while it was a little bit expensive, it was like 30 bucks or something, it has been well worth it. It never breaks a lead. It gets a really, really sharp point, which I love. And I have a hard time with the, the manual kind because of the tendonitis in my hands. So being able to sharpen like that is much better. All right, this is the Pablo Carmine. And you see me going over the dark areas that I've done, darkening them again, and then moving on into where I made the medium color with the dark carmine. And then on into the light. And once again, I'm lightening up my strokes because that's going to be that's going to be even lighter, but I want some of this regular carmine in there. So it's just creating a gradient. You know, it's the pencils blend perfectly on their own. And notice I haven't had to wipe anything off. There's no powder. There's no nothing. These these pencils are just perfect. And I did not notice that I was this far down. I'm so sorry. <laughs> Sometimes I just color and get in, a, get in a thing. There we go. I moved it. So I'm pretty sure this is still the same pencil. And I had to pause for some reason, too. So it helped me move this up. So... Again, I'm taking in the regular carmine, going back into the dark carmine, and just darkening, darkening up what I had done before, and then pushing the pushing the color out. It's it's easy with markers or my Copics at the at the very least, because the Copics the light, the lighter color pushes around the darker color. So when I color dark to light, I can actually move that color around. You can't do that with pencils because that pen, that color is not moving. That color wants to be where it is. So you have to do a little bit more planning when you do dark to light. You know, you have to say, this is where I want my darks, because once you do it, it's not really going to go anywhere. I mean, I suppose I could smooth it out with white, maybe. You know, you can always layer with colored pencils, which is very nice. And you see me just going in with the darker. And I want to keep this edge of her hair, just this edge, to be dark, and the rest of it I want to be light. So I'm not pushing in that regular carmine too much. But again, I'm just going over the work that I had done before. And then where I made the dark a little bit lighter, I'm making the carmine its own color. So you can see as the layers are added that each color gets its you know time in the sun. I don't really know what all to say other than just to let you watch me color. <laughs> but um but yeah, it's it's just about layering and you get with pencils you get a feel of how heavy your hand should be and how light it should be. And here I'm bringing in the Pablo Raspberry Red and going over the dark carmine and mixing in the raspberry red so that you get a little bit of it on that layer as well so that both of those are blended together and then I'm blending it out into the very light carmine so that the uh, the raspberry red can have its time. You see me filling in this whole spot so 
that's about as light as I'm going to make it. But the good thing, the cool thing about the layering is when I do bring in the lighter colors, it's going to lighten up that raspberry red. It's going to make it, you know, dull some of its color almost because you're adding in a lighter color on top of it. It While it can't push around the uh, the darker colors below it, it can change them a bit. So I'm just going over each section of her hair exactly the way that I wanted it. I'm going to leave her tail fin with not as much color because I want her tail fin to be the, uh, the teal that I'm going to bring in for her tail. So now I'm going to start to color around it. I'm just using it, going to every section and making sure that this new color is blended in with the darks and also has its own section of, of light and color. You see me sharpening it. And I think this one is salmon or rose pink. It's also polychroma. And that's that's really all it is. It's it's back and forth, color to color, giving each one its own time as well as blending it in with the others that came before it so that you get a nice gradient. And uh, I don't know if you'll notice, but you see me spinning the pencils often. If I'm not sharpening them, I'm spinning them because when you do that, when you when you do these broad strokes, you're giving it an edge. So if you turn it again, if you watch how I handle the pencil, if you turn it again, you'll end up with a sharpened edge again. And turn. Every time I lift my hand up like that, I'm subtly turning the pencil to get a sharper edge. I see you see me blending it in a bit. It doesn't really do it a whole lot. It, um, I mean, like I said, these are oil-based, so not only will the oils on your fingers do it a bit, but you can blend in what's on there. But notice there's no powder. I don't have to blow anything off. I don't have to wipe anything off. It doesn't make those, you know, marks on your paper, so you don't have to worry about dragging one color into another or into your white area because you've accidentally gotten this pink, and now it's, you know, infecting your <laughs> your teal. So this teal is the Pablo Malachite Green. And again, I'm just defining where my shadows are. I like to work section by section, so I always do the skin first, and the hair second, and then this is what I would call the accent, or you know, if she were wearing clothes, it would be her clothes. So you saw me do the dark, and then I did the medium, and now I'm doing the very light so that this malachite gets in everywhere. I'm going to go onto her seashells and make sure those get their their darks. You know, this takes time. This took me... Gosh, I don't even know. I'm going to say about a half an hour to color. I mean, I've I've sped it up to 4x, so it's it looks faster. But you know, it takes time. It takes patience, I guess. I I use it as more of a relax relaxation technique. You know, when you're in the shower and your mind wanders and you just do whatever. I do that when I'm coloring. My mind just kind of wanders and I I let the colors go and do what they want. And that's why I do this quick and dirty kind of stuff instead of really thinking about it because. Shading does not come natural to me yet. I don't know where all the shadows are. I don't know how it would look 3D and natural. So instead of stressing about it, I just kind of go with it. And um, sorry, I went through the Pablo Azurite Blue, and now I've picked up the Faber-Castell Cobalt Green as my medium color. And you see how well that these mix. The reason that I got two is because they don't, really overlap the colors. They both have 120 colors and a lot of them are their own color. Even the skin tones, they're all different. And it's just something that I, I really enjoy mixing mediums and I think these two brands are incredibly high quality and they mix very, very well together. Uh, like I said, the uh, the Coran de Ash ones are more creamy, but the uh, I really like the, the hard look of the Faber-Castell as well. 
And now I've picked up the Pablo turquoise green. I really love the turquoise colors that the Pablos have and how light you can get it. The Faber Castell only has a has a few of them, but this one seems to have a whole range of very nice turquoise colors. So I'm just coloring her in her tail and I wanted to wanted it to be semi transparent. That's why I colored the lighter pink or the dark carmine over it so that you could see some of that pink through her tail so it's not quite an opaque tail and that's why I'm not going to color in her tail too darkly so that you get the sense that you can see things through her tail and when she gets on a card obviously you're not going to be able to see the card through it but whatever <laughs> I can't work magic so I'm just filling in most of these spaces and then this is my very lightest the uh, the Pablo light green and I'm just filling in all of the any white in there that I had colored lightly with any of the other colors is being filled in and made into a more seamless seamless color and I'm blending that light in with the uh, some of the dark to make it not quite as dark because I really like how this light green looks and I think I have a paper that matches it pretty well so I wanted to get in the, the lighter version of that so I'll come just coloring over the whole thing and blending it and these bl these things blend just spectacularly like I said you can use baby oil or Gamsol or you know OMS or anything that you want to use that is just not a choice that I make it's not really a, a a technique that I would want to do and in my work I don't really feel that it's necessary I think that the pencil work looks just fine on its own so just making a darker shadow here I picked up the malachite green again and I'm just darkening those little spots where I made it a bit too light you can add as many layers as you want to these and it's the same thing with Copic work I, I go back and I add I add dark sometimes, you know. If I made something too light with the lighter lighter markers, I'll go in and add darker. And here's where I add my shadows. Uh, these are called hard shadows. It's not something that you blend in. It's something that is being light is being cast onto her face. So for that, I'm using the Faber-Castell Dark Indigo. And so she's getting a hard shadow from her hair. I didn't really define a light source other than, you know, kind of, uh, I want to say it's kind of to the right and then pointing up at her, from the, from the right side up. So I mean, there's sort of a light source, it does sort of go light to dark, but not really. <laughs> I, I, I mostly wanted to just show you how to get a gradient on your, uh, on your pencils. So. You see me defining the hard shadows, which would technically be in the wrong area for the light source I just told you about. Except for the one behind her little butt, because if it is shining on her butt, then she's still making a hard shadow onto her hair. And her shoulder is making a hard shadow onto her face, and this curve of her hair gets one. And I think we're coming to about the end of the video. I'm going to define her nose a little bit because she gets a little shadow for her nose and I think that's about it so I hope this helped I hope that uh, you bring out your pencils and your stamps and and color away because pencils and markers are great and I really enjoy the the change from coloring pen, coloring with pencils versus coloring with Copics so thank you so much for watching and here's a little bit of close-up and I'll show you the card later have a great day bye bye